One of the great tools that we get to use in any sort of pest animal management is trail cameras, or sometimes referred to as camera traps. So I thought I'd just show you a little bit about some of the cameras and how they work. So one of the suggestions is to use rechargeable batteries. You can purchase these and a charging kit. The other thing that you'll need is an SD card. Recommend at least eight gigabytes so that your storage is enough. And with this particular camera, you'll notice it tells us which way the card must go in. It's important because if that card goes in the wrong way, much like a battery going in the wrong way, camera won't work. Each camera brand will have a different off and on switch. Some will have a code, and that's up to you to work out how you want to manage that camera. Some of the things that we'd recommend you have a black light, what they call a black flash camera, which um, doesn't signify a flash to an animal of a night time. You'll notice that most animals will react to when a camera goes off, and that's uh, mainly due to the noise of, of the camera operating. But um, on a trail or on a track that you might put this on, they, um, they get used to that very quickly. And in fact, some of the times will give you some of the great facial looks that an animal can do as it turns towards that camera. An infrared camera is recommended, which will allow uh, photos to be taken without the animal being aware that the camera has um, flashed. The noise of the camera might well alert the animal to it, but um, they soon get used to that. These cameras will have a menu that will allow you to set uh, how often you want these uh, photos to be taken and how many per second. A lot of this setting up your camera depends on the animal that you're chasing, that you think that you want to get a, a good look at. So obviously if it's a smaller animal, you're going to go a bit, a bit lower. But for something like feral deer, um, you need to come a little bit higher. Importantly, it's the angle that you set that camera up at and the direction that you point it. The last thing you want to do is set it towards a setting sun. Because as those animals start to move, the sun will take that glare and won't, you won't get a good photo. So set it away from a setting sun. As you can see here, with the sun directly behind me, silhouetted over the sky, it's extremely difficult to see exactly what, it, what you're taking a photo of. Whereas with the background behind me here, you can see me much clearer. No different with an animal moving past, so have a think about that where your, where your trail camera is set. Now our, our track runs this way. If I set my camera at 90 degrees on this track, I have a very short time when that animal activates and is gone. So if it's moving at, at pace, I'm gonna miss it. So if I come about half that, again, I've got a little bit more, but if I come to about this angle, so we've been at 90, um, we've been at 45, and about at 22 and a half is about the optimum angle to capture. Now for deer, as I said before, I'm going to have it a little bit higher. So I'm gonna set my strap at about that angle. So I'm pretty happy with that setup. I'll switch this camera on. Very important to make sure that you've switched your camera on because lots of people set cameras up, spend a lot of time getting it right and then forget to turn it on. So check that last, make sure it's switched on. Sometimes you'll find that the tree isn't quite right. So what you can do, simply use a stick to change the, the angle of the camera up or down. So if I wanted that to bend down a little bit, because I was a bit concerned that it might be pointing too far up in the air, so if you look through here and the angle of the camera was up a little bit like that, then I could simply slip a little stick in behind it and that'll push the angle of that camera down. So now, as you can see, with our track running down this way, the camera is set up at the optimum angle for the, for the heat signature of the animal moving past to activate the camera. Some cameras come with a walk test, which you can use to make sure that it's initiating when you've walked past, and I would recommend that you use that. But if, if, the, if your camera doesn't, make sure that you check uh, your camera after a few days. That way you're going to be able to see how it's activating and how efficient it is at picking up that movement. 
Once you've got your camera set up, be prepared to leave it there for a, an extended period of time. You want about a month before you even decide that nothing's happening there. Lots of times you'll set a camera up, people go and check them every day because they think that, oh well, I'll have something tonight. Give yourself a bit of time. Pest animals aren't gonna turn up every night. Everyone who ever uses a trail camera will always tell you they get thousands of photos of grass waving at them. So if you can pick an, an area where the grass is not going to be long and waving at the camera, you'll save on lots of false activations. Um, sometimes that can be a challenge, but one of the things that we try to do is put them in an area that, that the, the trail is wide enough that it's not activated by grass a lot of the time. You need to think clearly about where you want to set your cameras up. If you do happen to have an area where animals are funnelled in, whether by vegetation or by the, the landform, that's an excellent spot to put a camera. Um, tracks, roads are a great spot to put cameras. If it's easy for humans to walk, it's easy for animals to walk. In the case of feral deer, the other way that you could uh, save your photo is to upload them to deer scan. So the information about the photo is kept in a secure spot, which includes the positioning and the date and the time. It is important to remember that if, you're, if you've got a camera on this particular trail, that's not telling you about your whole holding. So you might need to move that camera around to check out what's happening on the other side. It'll tell you what's happening on this particular track, but not necessarily what's happening on that particular